Hey everybody, Joe here with Speedway Motors Tech Talk, and Jeff and Zach are here to help us do a cam swap on our Junkyard 5.3. Now, we could do this over at Zach's engine shop where we have all the fancy tools and, and everything else, but instead, we're gonna do it here in our shop and show you how you can do this at home in your garage. We're gonna swap in a BTR Truck Norris cam, and uh, then we'll see how much power we can make out of this thing. The balancer bolt on, a, on these LS motors is uh, torqued to something like 200 foot pounds and it's very difficult to get off at most of your at home shops with just a ratchet so you're going to need to get an impact that's capable to get it out so the next thing we need to do is pull the balancer off and unlike your typical small block chevy fords uh, take your pick it has no bolt holes in it so we got a special puller that hooks in behind the puller Heat them a little bit, get them to move a little bit, put a good puller on them. Don't mess around with trying to get a two jaw on the outside or something crazy like that, you know. Use the right tools, it makes a big difference. We're going to remove the rocker arms now. Uh, they're a pedestal mount rocker arm instead of a traditional stud mount rocker arm. They're, they're non-adjustable. You can just zip them all off of here for disassembly's sake and uh, you kind of take them off as, as a unit. We're going to be putting a trunnion upgrade kit in them from the factory. They come with a bunch of needle bearings in there and after 130,000 miles, that's, that's what the rocker actually rotates on. Just a good idea if you want to put a little bit more power, a little bigger cam to put a trunnion upgrade kit in it. It replaces all those needle bearings with either new needle bearings or bushings. So to add to what Jeff was saying, another reason to replace the fulcrum bearings is the, the factory rocker has a flat spot on the fulcrum here and it limits the amount of lift you can have around somewhere around 530 lift in that ballpark. So the, the new fulcrum upgrade we'll put in will be a full round unit so that it won't limit the lift anymore. Another thing to look at on these rocker arms uh, is where the, the tip rides on the valve. Sometimes they can get flat spotted uh, just from, from wear. All right, so we hand threaded the balancer bolt back in so we have uh, a way to turn the motor over. And we're gonna start the process of removing the camshaft. So you spin the motor over until the dot on the cam gear meets up with the dot on a crank gear. They need to be lined up. This will make it easier to install the cam later. So when those two teeth are pointed at each other in this dot to dot, you also notice the dowel pin in the cam is pointed to the number one cylinder straight across. And we can leave that there and we can start to remove the camshaft. We'll remove the cam gear. cam retainer plate, thrust plate. Oh, on, uh, on LS, this is an oil crossover right here. You need to inspect this plate, and if it's not in good shape, in this O-ring here, this whole plate comes for like $12, uh, and you can just put a new one on. This one appears to be in great shape. So you can take your cam bolts that you just took out, put them back in a few turns, gives you a handle so you can spin the camshaft. And at this point in time, you just spin the cam, and it'll push the lifters back up in the lifter trays so you can remove the camshaft. The only problem is if the lifters fall out of the lifter tray, uh, you won't be able to get them back in unless you take the heads off and everything else. So, if you were in the vehicle doing it, there's a neat little trick. Take a wooden dowel rod, st stick it down here and it holds the lifter up. Since we have an on engine stand, we could just turn it upside down. Uh, not everybody's gonna pull their engine to change the camshaft. So we're gonna show you how this is done like it would be in the vehicle. It's a 5 16 wooden dowel rod. Just buy at the hardware store. It's a snug fit, it should be, because you're using them to 
hold the lifters in place. And now that those are in, the lifters can't fall. So we're gonna install this Brian Tooley truck Norris cam. Uh, and it's a great camshaft for pickups and street cars that uh, you don't have to change the converter in. Um, it'll sound great. Has about around 550 lift. Should make great mid-range power, low end power. Should be a lot of fun to drive. But we're gonna put a little oil on it and try to be real gentle with it and get it in there without nicking the cam bearings and take our time and do it right. Another cam bolt in so you can have a handle to turn it over nice. And again, point the dowel pin over towards number one when we took the other one out. All right, now the cam's in place. We can remove the dowel rods, replace the cam retainer plate, and don't forget to torque the uh, bolts in there to 22 foot pounds. Now we'll put the timing set back on. And since we haven't moved the crank, the dot on the crank gear is still pointing straight up. When we find the, the dot on the cam gear is gonna line up with that. Just hold it up here, make sure all the teeth are on. Line it up, pull it up tight. Make sure with tension on it that everything stays in place. Once you get everything in there and remain lined up. You can torque those in place again, 22 foot pounds. We're going to change these valve springs out. The stock valve springs give this thing some more pressure, more lift capabilities. We're gonna install a tool into the spark plug hole to uh, add air pressure and that's gonna keep your valves closed during this process. This is the valve spring compressor tool that comes with the um, kit that we purchased for this job. All right, now what we're gonna do is tighten that nut down. It's gonna compress the springs. He's got air inside the cylinder holding the valve so they can't let the uh, valves drop down the cylinder when we have the springs off the engine. So. You can see the locks are loose. You can pull the locks out one at a time. Reverse the process. And remove the valve springs. Since we have the springs off, we're gonna put new valve seals in it. Make sure they're seated all the way down. And we're gonna install our new valve springs. Set them on there. And you install the valve locks again, one at a time. And you only want to compress it far enough to get the locks in. Make sure the valves and the locks seat in there. You can see everything's nice and square. Remove the tool and repeat for the other seven cylinders. All right, so we're planning on just putting the cam back in this thing and putting it all back together. Uh, we were inspecting all the parts on this motor after we had it apart and we noticed some strange wear on the push rods of this engine here. So we're gonna go ahead and air on the cautious side here and we're gonna pull the heads off. We're gonna have the lifters all replaced, new lifter valley trays, and as well as the uh, rocker arms. Half of these have got some funny wear on this side of the motor as well. And you notice it's kind of an egg shape to the uh, rocker where they meet the uh, push rods. So something else to look for when you're doing a cam swap.
We're in the process of changing the fulcrum bearings in these stock rocker arms. We have a kit from Speedway Motors uh, that makes this process easy to do at home in your, in your vise. Put the removal tool in, just two pieces. Press it together, in a couple turns, pops apart and throw away the old bearings and it's removed. So then to put the new fulcrum bearings in, uh, there's, there's two new bearings in this new fulcrum that uh, spins 360 degrees around. Uh, and then to assemble it, you go back into the vise and you just use these two washers on either side uh, as spacers to be able to push the bearings all the way in. It's just a matter of lining it up in the vise and squeezing it together. The last step is to secure them on there with the supplied snap rings, one on each side. Make sure they're seated in the groove. They're ready to go back on the motor. All right, so we removed the heads uh, and surfed them, but the whole point was to get at the lifters. And we're replacing the stock lifters with the LS7 lifter that Speedway sells as a DOD replacement lifter. Um, so I'm in sets of eight. And uh, why we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and put new buckets in here because they don't cost a lot. And we might as well just get to it while we're doing it. A little tip, a little easier to put the lifters in the trays and then set it in there so you don't fight the, trying to get the, get these little flats to slide in there once, once they're down inside the motor. And we just got these lifters soaking in some driven 30 weight oil, just make sure they're good and pre-lubed before we put them in. So while we had these heads at the engine shop, we surfaced five to six thousandths off of there just to clean them up, make sure they were flat. Uh, we went ahead and looked over all the valves and, and uh, lapped in the valves just to make sure everything was in good shape while they were off. And uh, it's a good idea if you take heads off of any motor really to drop them by your local machine shop, check them for flat. Uh, worst case scenario, everything's good. You can bolt them back on. And you don't have to redo the job twice. We're gonna torque these things up in the proper sequence. I happen to have a uh, snap-on torque wrench that uh, will find angles. Uh, otherwise, there's a little degree wheel you can put on and buy for relatively cheap that you can set to zero pull your wrench and it tells you the degrees that you've gone. Because these are torque to yield bolts. And we'll torque them to 22 foot pounds. And then we'll go through and we'll turn them all 90 degrees. And then we'll go through and turn them all again another 90 degrees. You want to watch where is make sure your flat spots on your trunnions are all facing up. There's a flat spot where the bolt head seats. All right, everything's back together. Obviously, we've got to button this up here, put the intake back on at time and cover and stuff. But the cam swap is complete. And, and you've kind of seen it both ways now. Uh, you know, you can just stab a cam in it, retain the lifters, uh, use the dowel to hold the lifters up. And then you've seen what it looks like when, when you have to go a little farther and pull the heads off, change out the lifters. So really no big tricks here. LS cam swaps are pretty easy. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, give us a call. And thanks for watching.